Jimbo's Garage. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to Jimbo's Garage. Well, today I got another gate build for you. This one is going to be a tall one, nine feet tall, about four feet wide, and maybe we'll get a little fancy with the pickets on the inside. Let me show you where this gate is going, then we'll get started on today's video. Today's video is sponsored by King Metals. They've got all your fabrication needs in one location. From hinges to hardware, balusters to metal decor, brass to aluminum, and a whole lot more. You name it, they've got it. Check them out today at kingmetals.com. Now let's get back to today's video. All right, so this thing is going down here. Uh, I just had knee surgery about four months ago, so I'm still recuperating from that. It's kind of a steep angle, but uh, gotta be careful. All right, so this is where the gate's going. It's about four feet wide and about nine feet tall. We're gonna be going from the bottom here all the way to the very top. Because this pole's in the way right here, and I'm gonna be mounting the post right here and right here, the gate's gonna swing in, so I'm gonna have to do a little bit of grading right here. Uh, so the reason why it's going to swing in is to avoid this post right here. The, well, why we're building this gate so tall is we're trying to get a little bit of security from down this area right here. We've been having a lot of uh, home invasions along the block right here. And people running up and down this channel right here. And if they jumped over the fence, they'd have easy access up into here. So by building this tall gate right here, we hope we can deter that. So let's get back in the shop and get this thing built. Ah, Jesus. Okay, so getting ready to build the nine foot gate. And, um, you know, there's one thing that, um, that I wasn't going to film, and that is the posts. I may have mentioned that uh, in order to build the gate, I need to install the posts so I can get the accurate dimensions, the width, and the height. And, you know, building posts um, are fairly simple. Installing is very simple. I wanted to focus mainly on just building the gate. But there's so much detail going into these posts. I think I owe it to you guys to just kind of go over uh, what's going on. And I just wanted to show you what I'm having to do in order to get these posts installed so we can get a final plumb accurate dimension uh, for the gate. So the situation on the hill there is that the nine foot block wall that's there is leaning about an inch and a half away. The opposite side of the wall that's about maybe four and a half feet tall, then there's some wrought iron on top of that, um, requires another post that would be mounted and then some spacers that would connect to the iron that I can screw through so I can get that fastened up to the nine foot level. So it's quite a bit. This is the post right here that's going on the block wall. And I don't know if you can see it, but I've added spacers to the back of it, inch and a half, uh, one inch and half inch at that end. I've also drilled some mounting holes. I've got four holes here that we're gonna use to mount this post to the block wall by going through here and anchoring it that way. And that takes care of this one. The opposite side one, same thing. I've drilled the mounting holes here. I've also had to install the latch because there's no welding once I get down there and, and I have to put the latch on here. And these are some custom brackets that I've had to make to accommodate the mounting to the block wall and then these are what we're going to use to mount to the ironwork. So a lot of detail going into these posts before we can actually get the, the, the dimensions of the gate. One other thing that we need to do to this post right here is we need to weld the hinges on and that way everything will be in place when I mount this then we can just go ahead like I say there's no welding over there and in order to do that I'm going to have to cut the nine foot section of the gate and I'll 45 both ends and then I'll line it up with this post right here and we'll go ahead and on this one we're going to install three hinges three four inch weld on hinges um, one on either end and one in the middle. We're gonna go ahead and get those welded on with that single piece that's, that will be part of the gate that we're gonna build. So with that said, let me go ahead and get these hinges welded on, then I'll get these posts installed, and then we'll be able to finally get to building our gate. 
Okay, so I'm over at the Evolution right here, and this is the one side of the 9-foot gate that uh, I need to cut. So exactly 9 feet long, cut a 45 on both sides right here, and uh, that'll represent the one side of the 9-foot gate. And I'll be able to uh, get the hinges welded on <clears throat> and get them lined up with the posts. All right, over at the welding table, table dog's in place, and I'm going to pull that uh, post nice and square to that. And I'm going to clamp it down, and I've got some 3H wood spacers, and I'm going to pull those in, pull the, uh, the fence rail into that, tighten everything up, and everything is lined up nicely. All right, three hinges on this one right here, four-inch weld-on or bullet hinges. And uh, what I like to do is I like to weld my hinges about six, seven inches from the top, six, seven inches from the bottom. And when I say that, I mean to the top of the hinge. So about, in this case, I believe I was seven inches to the top of the grease dirt right there. And then on the bottom, it'd be seven inches to the bottom of the hinge there. The third hinge is in the middle. You know, it all depends on uh, where you want to put those hinges on the gates. Most gates have two hinges, but uh, between six and eight inches is where I like to go, depending on the proportional size of the gate. One thing you want to keep in mind when welding these on is uh, to keep those these hinges in a straight line. Uh, you know, sometimes when you lay them in there, put a tack on them, it, it likes to pull the hinge to one side. Just be sure that you, before you weld everything that those hinges all line up in a straight row or you're going to have a problem with the gate binding when you take it off. And only weld on the tabs that on these bullet hinges is provided. So there's just a flat on one side and a flat on the other. That's all you need. It's going to be plenty strong. No more additional welding required. All right, got everything on. Everything is working really good. Yeah, let's get it installed. All right, I got my posts installed uh, so I can finally make my, uh, uh, my final uh, measurements for this gate, which is going to be about nine feet tall, about four feet wide. Bit of a challenge. Uh, both walls here were, were out of plumb, and I had to do some shimming in order to, uh, uh, to get them perfectly plumb. But... I got it. So now we got our dimensions. Let's build our gate. All right, back at the evolution to go ahead and finish everything up right here. This one here is the second of the uh, nine foot uh, bench section right here. I should say gate section. And uh, I'm just making some cuts right here. This one here, uh, it is a long section. I'm getting both the top and bottom rails cut out of this piece right here. Just trying to get all my pieces cut. Um, you know prior to the installation <clears throat> one thing i get questions asked is, is a lot is the saw how it's free moving around freely right here well, that's only because i've got limited space for where this saw is you can see that's the only space i have it's tight i've got an organizing cabinet to the right i've got a drill press toolboxes welding equipment to the to the left of this and so i need to have this saw to be moving around uh, depending on 45 cuts or straight cuts and so having the ability to just move this saw in the position I need to make it work um, works well for me all right with all the pieces cut back to the welding table right here and clamping everything down and getting ready for uh, to weld this thing up you know this is something that uh, that that I've recently gone to and uh, you know the more you do the more you learn and in that case when I'm clamping this whole gate down exactly the way it needs to be on the dimension it needs to be um, before what i do what i have done in the past is just uh, welded the two 90 degree top and bottom uh you know side rail and top rail together at one time then flipping it over and welding that piece and you know this is a much faster much easier way uh to do this and that's get everything clamped down exactly where everything needs to be double check for square like i've done right here right on the money and you're not going to have any problems Today we're working off the brand new HDP Revolution 2500. This is a brand new machine from HDP, uh, all in one. When I say all in one, I mean all in one. This is MIG, TIG, and stick, AC, DC, TIG, and it also is uh, pulse in all three processes. It truly is an all in one machine. You should not have to have any other machine in your arsenal. Uh, works really well. Uh, just uh, I haven't had it for very long, but I'm really enjoying it. All right, so welding this right here, you can see that uh, 
uh, I am going with everything clamped down. I'm welding as much as I can possibly weld before I flip it over and do the rest of the welding. Uh, this is uh, going to keep everything nice and square, and you now it just makes for easier fabrication. A little bit of stitch welding right here. I had a little bit of a gap right there, and I'm just filling this in just like that. And then right on down, nothing that uh, a little bit of grinding won't clean up. And I'll be doing that here shortly once I get everything welded all the way around. All right, that was as much as I could do. And now it's the grinding time. And uh, I just like to clean up my welds as much as I can. I've mentioned this before. It just makes for a better, cleaner job, in my opinion. Uh, you're not going to get all of them, but you are going to get the ones that uh, are going to be on the front and back uh, surface as well. And what another reason to grind them down right here at this time, when you flip it over, the gate will be nice and flat on the welding surface. And if I don't do this, I'm gonna be it's gonna be not level, the welds are gonna stick up, and it's gonna be a bit of a problem. All right, so for the pickets on this job, I've decided to go with uh, with three quarter inch. Now, you know, you typically I use half inch, uh, five eighths is most common, but for this, because the gate is so big. Uh, I elected to go with three quarter inch, just something a little bit more stout looking, and that's kind of what I was looking for. And I'm always up to trying something different. You know, this gate design is just something that I randomly came up with uh, as I'm building it and decided that I just want to do something a little bit different. It is my gate, so therefore I can do what I want. And it was a good experimentation for me to, to come up with a nice design. You can see that I've got the uh, <clears throat> some 5-8 wood spacers underneath. That gets the pickets up in the middle of the 2-inch frame. And then I'm using what you can see there is a 4-inch spacer. And that's some space in these pickets right at 4 inches. That's what uh, mathematically worked for the size of the gate that I had. And with just a little bit of adjustment, maybe on the very last one, but not too much. Something that you, you're never really going to see. You can see I'm double-checking it right there. And it might be off an eighth or less, something that you'll never see. All right, well, the one side done, this is the side that uh, I got a little creative with. And, and, you know, you live and you learn. I, yeah, I have this vision in my head of what I, what I want it to look like. <clears throat> Thought it would be fairly simple. I battled with this literally hours, multiple hours. I can't even tell you, six hours maybe, of, of trying to get these cuts just right. I didn't realize how, how difficult it was going to be. But I have a whole series of these things that need to be cut at 45 degree angles in order to make it fit. And here's where I, I've got them all stacked in here finally, <clears throat> and it's time for assembly. Again, I, you can see I got a couple little black marks over there. I thought that was those are the marks that I needed in order to line things up. Um, um, okay, I'm double checking. This is the very first one. The first one really dictates how the rest of them are going to go. So that's what I got in there. I got um, going with four inch spacing. This worked out pretty good, but when I put this one in right here, it was supposed to go right in the corner and then it was way off up at the top. And I couldn't, I mean, that gap was about a half inch. I couldn't fill that gap. So I wanted to double check right here to be sure that it was just that one that I made a mistake on. And then if I lined them up, uh, would the rest of them be okay and the rest of them fit? and i think so so i ultimately had to replace that third one right there i just cut a different one to fit in there and now when i put these in they should all line up <clears throat> and they do and uh it's now just a process to just work my way up so it's a chevron design you know so i've got these going in this direction and then the ones on the other side i'll go in the opposite direction and that's another learning curve, you know. Uh, you have to take a lot into consideration right here. Uh, you know, this is a 45 here, but if they come together on a 45, that's one thing. But now I've got this two inch spacing in there and uh, you know, they're not exactly uh, uh, dimension wise uh, equal. It, uh, it was a bit of a challenge for me. But it's something that you, that you learn as you go. And uh, you know, now that I've done this, the next time I go to do it, I'll remember that uh, I need to make these adjustments uh, moving forward. <clears throat> what I'm saying here is, all right, so here's the, uh, you know, we, ideally you want the both sides of these to line up all the way across. So in order to do that, I've got this two inch space in the center right there. So I want this, these posts, if you had a, if you had a, um, 
90 degree scribe on that two inch post, you want these pieces to line up equally on both sides. Bit of a challenge. Um, it was really close. Uh, it was within an eighth of an inch. I wasn't going to recut everything for the sake of that. It's something that nobody's going to see. Uh, but man, I'm telling you, I, I really, I really struggled with this part of the deal. It, it took a long time. You know, one piece at a time, measuring each individual piece to be sure that <clears throat> everything was going to line up. And if I had to make, the, <coughs> excuse me, if I had to make any other adjustments, that I would be doing it. Uh, during this adjustment right here during the measurement right here but they're all were fairly close you can see i'm just double checking the last one right there M had to make a slight little adjustment uh something that you that like i said you really can't see just a learning curve you know, it's all about uh just building something and learning as you build all right once i got everything in and i was happy with it it <clears throat> it was time to go ahead and and you know weld everything all the way around and this is something that i like to do i mentioned this in my other videos i don't like to leave any gaps on anything uh, where water can get in and, and cause corrosion or rust <clears throat> uh, i like to weld all the gaps all the way around and that posed another problem for me that uh, um, that i came across and that is the 45 degree angle on the inside there and that uh, it was hard for me to get uh, the gun inside of that uh, to get that welded up the stick out was right around an inch and a quarter um, maybe an inch and a half in some in some cases and that's a lot of stick out to try to get weld uh, inside to cover that up but I uh, ended up getting it and here I'm just doing the easy ones first right here and get this all out of the way and I knew it was coming. I knew I, I was going to be battling with it. I didn't, I mean, you'll see that I, I just filmed some of it, but uh, I'm telling you about it. It was a bit of a challenge. But anyways, I'm just finishing up the easy stuff right here. And here it is, tight, really tight. And you had to be accurate and a lot of stick out <clears throat> in here uh, to, to fill that gap. But uh, um, anyways, I ultimately got it done. So this was a good little build here for me, good little design. This is something, again, I just kind of, uh, as I was going, I kind of decided this was what I wanted to do. It's just something a little bit different. There it is right there before the powder coaters, and I got it powder coated, and there it is installed. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next video. See you next time on Jimbo's Garage.